If you are someone who is looking to invest in a strong African market that has a positive economic outlook and a stable democracy, then you should definitely try to look at and figure out ways in which you can invest on the Ghana Stock Exchange. This is something that drove me to this stock market. The country is amazing. The people are amazing. They have interesting amazing and resilient companies on their stock exchange and we are going to talk about Ghana in this video and I'm going to share with you guys my journey and how I started investing on the Ghana stock exchange. I'm going to divide this video into two parts. I'm going to start with why Ghana. The second part of this video I'm going to talk about how. How did I start the process? What challenges or what steps did I take along the way for me to eventually open my account on the Ghana Stock Exchange and for me to start investing on the Ghana Stock Exchange. Now, starting with why Ghana. Ghana is a very interesting economy. It is an economy that you would say that it has been growing consistently over the past couple of years. And at one point, it actually became one of the fastest growing economies in Africa and definitely in the world. The reason for this definitely is because there has been a lot of policy consistency and Players on the, you know, on the African continent and players on the international world scale have been able to figure out and to sort of predict what the economic outlook for the Republic of Ghana is just because there has been consistency, especially on their political side. There's been a stable democracy where presidents have come and go and where the policy has really been robust and thrust into growing the economy and politicians have been accountable to their people. And this is definitely something that you want to invest in. This is an economy that you want to participate in because you understand that as long as there is policy consistency on the macroeconomic outlook, it also means that companies can be able to plan and companies can be able to figure out what long-term investments they have. And if you find an African economy where companies can be able to forecast everything and plan their long-term investments, then you know that these investments will pay off in the long run. And this is something that I really love Ghana for. The second thing, of course, is that Ghana's stock market has actually been performing well. If you look at the numbers, Numbers, numbers that I have here, uh, the, 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 the Ghana Stock Exchange Composite Index has been performing very well. In the past month alone, the market has gone up 11.87%. This is, this is amazing by any measure compared to most of other stock markets on the African continent. In the past three months, the market has gone up 18.88%, which is still very good. Year to date, which is from 1 January until today of 2021, the market has gone up 32.64%. These, these are good numbers. You really would want to participate in such an economy. And of course, the last statistic that someone might ask would be, how has the market performed in the past year? In the past year alone, this market has gone up 30.22%. So if you invested in the Ghana Stock Exchange a year ago, of course, this Composite Index is taking uh, a broader view of uh, the, the, the equities that are listed on the stock exchange. But on average, this market has gone up in the past year 30.22%. And this is something that you really can see that these are amazing figures. This shows growth on the stock market. And of course, these growth figures, we're only talking about the prices. Along the way, in the past year, some of these companies have also paid dividends, which means that the true return, depending on the portfolio that you have, could actually be way higher if you account for the dividends that have come in. Now, the second part for this video is how. How did I start? Of course, regular viewers of the channel would realize that this process started a while back ago when I put out a video that I talked about my plan to invest on, the, uh, on 10 African exchanges this year. Actually, the process started way before I made that video because after I met, because when I made that video, I was already in the process and I had already actually opened uh, my Ghana Stock Exchange account, except that I was still going through and finishing up on some last forms that needed to be signed off and to make sure that the account can actually start investing on the stock exchange. So the first thing I would say for you on the how part is, number one, you need to research and understand the market. Of course, as I always talk about, this is not about gambling. This is about actually putting your money to work for you and for you to realize returns that should not necessarily be a year or you know even uh, three years, but something that you would want to you know sit at and look at when you're 65, when you're 70, and something that you can pass on to your descendants for them to be able to uh, figure out what to do with the wealth that you would have built for them. So definitely, you need you want to start by reading and researching the market. You can also find out somewhere there 
uh, a link that will pop up and talk about my sources of information for African stock markets. And uh, you can look at that video and figure out if it gives you uh, enough tools for you to be able to start researching different uh, stock markets, especially, uh, of course, for this video, researching on the Ghana Stock Exchange. Step number two that you do on the how side of investing uh, on the Ghana Stock Exchange is that you actually want to go to the website. I'm going to leave a link in the description below of where on the website you're going to find this information. But you want to go to the Ghana Stock Exchange website and figure out the list of brokers. By my count, there are about 19 stock brokers that are listed so far. Of course, as I have explained in previous videos, you do not invest directly by buying uh, a company that's listed on the Ghana Stock Exchange. What you do is you need an intermediary in the market and this intermediary is called a stock broker. And so when you look at the list of the 19 stock brokers, you want to do an assessment. Well, firstly, even before you do an assessment, I think given that some brokers might not actually respond to your emails that you send them when you want to open an account, I think what I would advise you to do and what I did is that I just took all these 19 brokers and I wrote them a generic email. In, in, in my case, my generic email was really just, you know, a very two sentence uh, Gmail that I sent out. I talked about, you know, this is my name. Uh, I'm actually a Zimbabwean who is currently in the United States and I'm interested in investing on the Ghana Stock Exchange. I asked them, so may I know what is required for me to open an account uh, and uh, whether I'm required to open a local bank account or not. Those are the first two questions I ask. I say, what are the account opening requirements and do I have to open a local bank account? Because uh, local bank accounts are much more difficult to open than local stock broking accounts. So those are the questions that I uh, sent out actually in my first email. You can always word out your email in a different way. You can always word out and ask for more information if you want more information upfront. But then as a starting point, you just want to send out this generic email and then in follow-up emails, you can ask for more details before you actually decide to commit to one broker. Now, after you send out your information and after you send out uh, you know, your questions to these or all these 19 brokers that we're talking about, in my case, uh, the response rate was not actually pretty good. I received responses from about six brokers. And when I got these six brokers and they were telling me what they required, I then had to narrow down from there to see which broker was I actually going to pursue. Uh, as I talk about in my previous videos, I always try to look at the website and I always try to look at the research which they provide. So firstly, I look at the websites that they have, uh, the ones that had very shady websites and didn't really give information to investors, I just cut them off. And then I narrowed down my list and then I looked at uh, the research. I asked them about what research they gave out to investors for them to understand the market. And then they sent me their past uh, research reports and everything else, what they had done. And this is when I narrowed down and uh, got to my broker, which I now use in Ghana. And I'm going to link, of course, uh, leave a link to their website below uh, and also uh, their email, which definitely you can find on their website. But I'm just going to also put it uh, in the description below for those who might want to reach out specifically to the broker that I use. But you're free to do your own research, of course. And so after I narrowed down this list and after I had actually gotten my broker, which I now use, I then moved on to their specific requirements. Uh, so Ghana is, is particularly interesting in that uh, on top of sort of the regular requirements that you would find in most African stock markets, they do require if you're an international investor, that is if you're not uh, a, uh, a person who is resident or who is a citizen of, of Ghana, uh, they actually do require a due diligence form, which is something that is sort of like extra background checks. Uh, this is, of course, for like money laundering purposes and for them to really understand who these investors are who are trying to invest in their market. So the due diligence form is one of the requirements they have. Uh, of course, they also wanted other sort of uh, requirements that you would find in most other markets. They wanted a passport picture. Uh, for them to look at the investor who's going to be investing. They wanted an account opening form which you fill out and state your investment objectives and uh, state, you know, uh, how much money you earn and everything else. Uh, and what if you don't earn money really by a salary, what your source of money is because, you know, they need it's, it's part of uh, know your client requirements, KYC. Uh, and then, of course, lastly, they wanted a valid ID, which if you're not a citizen of Ghana would have to be sort of a scan of your passport that's certified that is uh, a true copy of the original. And then you just, I just sent out these things to my broker. And then after I sent out these things, of course, I waited a while while they were verifying the documents and sending them and opening uh, an account with the broker, but also opening an account uh, with sort of their securities depository, which, of course, as you understand, 
uh, in most African countries, equities are now traded electronically. So an investor would need also a securities depository account. So after this has been done, we actually got to a point where we signed all the information that I needed and everything was done and voila, the account was open and I was free to start investing on the Ghana Stock Exchange. Of course, the last two things I'll talk about here are how do I fund my account and actually how do I communicate with my broker. Of course, to start with how I communicate, I'm sure as you have seen, I talked about emails, but also at some point uh, when we are having a lot of back and forth trying to understand each other, I ended up making some phone calls, some international phone calls, just so that we could come on the same page and uh, get through the nitty gritties of, of account opening. So you might want to budget uh, within yourself. If uh, the, the, the reason why I, I did a phone calls mostly was because of time zone differences. It wasn't because emails are not efficient. The only problem is that if you are sitting in the United States and you're trying to communicate to someone uh, who is in Africa, you can only exchange one email per day, technically, uh, because I would email them when you know it's day here and then it's night there, they would wake up and then they would reply. By the time I wake up, they are actually probably leaving office and going. So I would reply, but then it would be too late. So they would only see the email when they came in next day. So if you want someone, if you are someone who wants to fast track this process, then you might want to also bring in a mix of phone calls. But if you're on the African continent, then there shouldn't really be any problem with this because uh, if you, you know, if you're in Zimbabwe, I mean, Ghana is probably, I think like a, an hour or two ahead of uh, Zimbabwean time zones, not particularly a time zone expert here, but um, you know, it's, it's something where you can quickly exchange emails throughout the day. So depending on your time zone, maybe you might want to factor in the fact that if you're opening an account in Ghana, you might want to make phone calls to make the process of account opening go a little bit faster. So that's how I communicate. Getting to the point of how I find my account, of course, as you realize, I'm not in Ghana uh, and I've never been to Ghana, uh, interestingly, though I really do hope to visit one day and uh, shout out to all my Ghanaian friends. They are amazing people. Um, and how I find my account here is that I actually do wire transfers, uh, international wire transfer, depending on where you are and your financial system, you'll be able to figure out the best way for you to send this. But if they, it's, it's, it's likely that international wire transfers are what you have. You just get uh, the account details from your broker and then you'll be able to wire the money it gets there. They get to tell you after subtracting the charges for your bank here and their bank on that side, they tell you what the account, the money they actually received is in Ghana. So this is just sort of a, a broader perspective of how I opened my account if you are someone who is actually investing in Ghana right now, please do let me know in the comments below. I would really love to learn and connect on top of the information, of course, and uh, the great research and advice that I get from my brokers. I would really love to know uh, other people who are investing on the Ghanaian Stock Exchange, whether you are in Ghana, whether you're outside. If you're someone who just loves Ghana as a market, uh, also or as a country, please do also give out a shout out to Ghana in the comments below. And if this video does inspire you to go and invest on the Ghana Stock Exchange, please do come back and share your story once you have opened your account so that other people can be able to ask you questions if they feel that the location where you are at is much more rela relatable to them or that your experience is much more interesting and relatable than the experience that I have had. But I really think I've had an amazing uh, you know, experience in this process and I really think I'm excited to continue participating on the Ghana Stock Exchange as an international investor. Until next time, see you. My name is Maro.